I want to teach you a trick that'll help you identify if you have an electron withdrawing group or an electron donating group on your molecule. In this lesson, we're going to focus on electrophilic aromatic substitution because the presence of electron withdrawing and electron donating groups can change the reactivity of the molecule. When a benzene ring with an electron withdrawing group reacts with an electrophile in electrophilic aromatic substitution, the electrophile adds to the meta position. From this EAS reaction with the electron donating group, we get introduction of the new electrophile ortho and para to the electron donating group. So we can say that these electron withdrawing groups are meta directors and donating groups are ortho para directors. Now electron withdrawing groups are just how they sound. They pull electrons out of the ring. And so, electron withdrawing groups actually make it harder for the ring to undergo EAS. The electrons are being pulled up toward this electron withdrawing group out of the ring, and so it's less reactive. We therefore say that these rings with electron withdrawing groups are deactivated. Conversely, these electron donating groups have electrons they can donate into the ring either through resonance or an inductive effect. Because of the added electron density on rings containing electron donating groups, we say that electron donating groups are activating groups. This is because the ring is more likely to undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution when an EDG is present on the ring. Okay, now let's get into our trick to figure out if we have a donating or withdrawing group. Say we have a substituted aromatic ring. We have groups bonded to it. Y is directly bonded to the ring, and Z is directly bonded to Y. Okay, if Z is more electronegative than Y, this is an electron withdrawing group. And if Y is the more electronegative element, then it's an electron donating group. Now this trick is going to work for most groups that we'll see substituting aromatic rings. But we need to add in just one more caveat to the rule just to make it work all the time. And this happens when Y is positively charged. If Y has a formal positive charge, then this is also an electron withdrawing group. Let's quickly review electronegativity in the corner of the periodic table so we can deal with most of the elements that we'll encounter in our examples. Going across the table, we have carbon, then nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. I've given a silly acronym before, can normal owls fly, to remember that piece. Going down from fluorine are the rest of the halogens. And let's just add in the two elements below nitrogen and oxygen that we may see in our organic compounds. Electronegativity is going to increase on a diagonal going up toward fluorine, and fluorine is the most electronegative element. Let's take a few examples. We'll apply the trick, but then we'll actually look at resonance forms and the chemistry to see why our trick works so well. Okay, so here are our examples. We have a nitrile, a methoxy group, a ketone, and an amide. Let's apply our trick to problem A. Bonded directly to the ring, we have carbon. Carbon is bonded to nitrogen, which is to the right of it on our periodic table. So, Carbon is bonded to something more electronegative than itself, and this is an electron withdrawing group. It'll be a meta director and deactivate the ring. We can also explain this with resonance. The nitrile is conjugated with the double bonds in the ring, so we can draw resonance forms that pull electron density out of the ring. So we moved our electrons away from this carbon atom, so it gets our positive charge, and we pushed electrons up onto nitrogen, and it's stabilizing our negative charge. Continuing to push electrons around the ring, we get a positive charge at the para position, and we can draw a final resonance form where the positive charge is ortho. In electrophilic aromatic substitution, one of the double bonds in benzene has to open up and attack an electrophile. Electrophiles are positive. Now, a positive charge doesn't want to interact with another positive charge, and so the increased electropositivity of the ortho and para positions when an electron withdrawing group is on the ring prevent it from reacting there. And that's why this is a meta director. Okay, let's check out problem B. 
we have an oxygen directly bonded to the ring, and that's bonded to carbon, a less electronegative element. So this is an electron donating group. Oxygen can be inductively electron withdrawing due to its electronegativity. However, it has lone pairs that are in conjugation with the ring. We can actually push them into the ring and increase the electron density within this aromatic ring. Resonance is typically stronger than induction, and so the electron donating resonance beats out the inductive effect. So using this lone pair to push electrons in the ring, we get a negative charge at our ortho position. If we continue to push electrons around the ring, we'll see we get concentration of electron density at the para and the ortho positions. So it makes sense that these electron donating groups would be ortho para directors. When they go to react with a positive electrophile, they want to react in the positions with greater electron density. Let's check out our ketone. Here's a carbon directly bonded to the ring, and that's bonded to an oxygen, a more electronegative element. This is an electron withdrawing group. Again, we have conjugation with the double bonds in the ring, so we can draw resonance forms that pull the electrons directly out of the ring and into the ketone. Here's our first resonance form, and we could continue to push electrons around the ring, just like in our first example, and see that positive charge is concentrated on the ortho and para positions. In our final example, we have nitrogen directly bonded to the ring, and it's bonded to a carbon atom. This is an electron donating group because nitrogen is our more electronegative element. And nitrogen has lone pairs it can donate into the ring. So just like with example B, we can push these electrons in and push the negative charge up onto carbon. Again, for this example, we could draw two more resonance forms, pushing this negative charge around the ring and see that it's concentrated on the ortho and para positions. Now, this is kind of an interesting case. We have this electron donation into the ring, but electron density can also be pulled in the other direction by the carbonyl. Let's just look at that for a second. So instead, if we push toward the carbonyl, we'll pull electrons away from the ring. Now, this structure contributes, and this structure also contributes. So this is still an electron donating group. Our trick still works, but it is not as powerful of an electron donating group as we saw in example B with our methoxy. The overall power that an electron donating or withdrawing group has is also important to its reactivity. So we'll discuss the strength of electron withdrawing and electron donating groups in another lesson. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.